I was glad when they said to me, we will go into the house of the Lord. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy way like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws, and we have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought to not have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, a most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty 
and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his compassion is over all his works. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold. O prisoners of hope, to today I declare that I will restore you to you double. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited yes, and redeemed, redeemed his people. His people. Wait, <laughs> okay. Um, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake, spake from the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he had, which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, 
that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowd, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee, the goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable, true, and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. Good morning and welcome to All Saints. I'm, uh, I'm trying to do double duty today. I'm, uh, I'm preaching, but I'm also um, running the slides and I'm realizing there are just key things that I've completely forgotten how to do. So I think, hold on just a second here. Uh, okay, I think we're good. Um, 
So it's a pleasure to be with you today. And I remember that last week, um, Steve was wise enough. Uh, I don't think he had said it quite this way, but um, rather than just diving into the gospel itself in its own right, he made some observations about the context of the gospel and of, of our own worship. And I think it's important to do that. Um, for one thing, if I do go straight into the gospel, I would have to say that one of the first things I notice about this is that it means that this that, that the gospel is telling us something not about what we're supposed to go and do. It's not a list of instructions or rules this week, um, nor is it a story about Jesus going around in the countryside and doing this or doing that. Um, instead, it seems to be Jesus go, uh, kind of having a commentary on what life in him looks like, about what it means to, to walk the way of a Christian and what we can expect. Not so much what we're expected to do, but what we can expect that relationship to be like. And it seems like an apropos time to comment on that again and to continue on the theme that Steve started last week. If I think about um, All Saints, I have to say that it strikes me that this this metaphor of being in the desert, um, in being in transition, being in this, in this place where you're neither fish nor fowl, um, applies in a couple of ways. One, uh, well, maybe they're both pretty obvious. Um, you are between rectors. Uh, I, I said uh, shortly after I arrived, don't worry about it, I'm just a temp. If there's anything you don't like, uh, I'll be gone soon enough. Um, and and that's true. We're in, uh, from a leadership point of view, you're in an in-between space. I'm not the person who's led you forever, and I'm not going to be the person who will lead you uh, forever after this. I'm the one who's with you for a time, for a transition. And as if that isn't uh, enough of a strain on a congregation to be in that type of transition, uh, the rug gets pulled out from under us according to coronavirus. And so uh, the very thing that we people as Christians do, the thing that, that we think, well, if I do these things, I am at least doing the work of being a, a Christian, um, or at least part of it, uh, is, is Eucharist. It's getting together in each other's presence, exchanging the peace with each other, touching each other, and being engaged by each other. And it's saying the words that we're saying now online, but saying them together in the same space and hearing our words resonate and echo in the space together. If there's one thing that Jesus is quite clear about and then Paul makes even clearer in his own writings, it's that to be in Christ means to be part of the body of Christ. There is no such thing as a lone Christian. It's one of the things uh, I remember that this image of, a, of someone becoming a Christian in a hotel room by finding a Gideon Bible. I don't, I don't fault the Gideons for putting Bibles in, the, uh, uh, in hotel rooms, um, but the notion that one becomes a Christian uh, and, and really uh, experiences this uh, formational change in a hotel room, they may experience a different perspective. They may have a different way of looking at things and commit themselves to uh, an amendment of life. But that amendment of life has not yet taken form as long as you're by yourself in a hotel room with a Gideon Bible. Instead, Jesus tells us that of all the laundry list of things that it would take for us to perfect ourselves, we don't have to worry too much about that because um, Jesus's yoke is easy and his burden is light. And he tries in so many different ways in the Gospels to explain to us that the best way that we can do the things that Christians do is first to become part of that body and see ourselves in relationship to Jesus. It's why, then, the Eucharist is the central act of worship in the Episcopal Church and in the Church as a whole. And that's the very thing we can't do right now because it means standing in each other's presence in a way that would be dangerous to the health of most members of our congregation. It means touching things and touching each other and receiving food from each other. And those are the things we cannot do today. 
So what are we to make of that? Well, I remember being brought up as a, a cradle Episcopalian and sitting through plenty of confirmation class and Sunday school lesson that when we studied the sacraments, we were told, first of all, that there are seven of them and that the Lutherans are wrong because they say there are only two, but we know better. But uh, right after that, it was that, um, that a sacrament is, you can probably rehearse it with me, it's an outward invisible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. The issue right now is that as we uh, are used to relating with each other, we are so attached to that outward invisible sign that when it's withdrawn, it's hard for us to see what constitutes the inward and spiritual grace. I've commented to a few people and, and to all of you in an email last night, uh, a reminder that the word religion itself is from the Latin word um, that means to bind, to bind together. And, uh, there are a couple of ways you can you can take and understand that. I think most etymologists believe that uh, the word religion came to us out of a sense of the binding that monks might do, or, or monastics, monks and nuns, uh, as a way of being bound into a discipline. But I think it's very accurate also to read that religio uh, understanding as a binding to each other and being bound to Christ. And the, the images just abound. If you, if you look again at today's uh, gospel, Jesus talks about being yoked together. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, unless we think that Jesus is just being very redundant there to say my yoke is easy and my burden is light, which would mean two different expressions of the same thing, I might argue that the yoke here doesn't refer to the, the weight of the yoke, to the burden of the the, the the physical dilemma of having that uh, yoke on, but rather the attachment. If two animals are yoked to each other, it means that they cannot move apart from each other. It means they are bound together. And so this, uh, this notion of, of religio and, and of being bound together, again, central to who we are. And during this time of transition, as we're out in our desert wilderness uh, between rectors, between gathering, all the things that are familiar to us, how do we find that binding? Well, some people have pointed to the fact, I think quite rightly, um, a colleague of mine uh, just south of here uh, wrote an article in the Living Church about it, this notion of what some people call spiritual communion that we can have a communion together uh, that is distinct from the physical communion that we have. And I have mixed feelings about this. I've, I've uh, refrained from commenting on that because I've still been kind of working out my own thinking about what I think is really going on in there. First off, I don't want to get too hung up on the outward invisible sign. As important as Holy Communion is, it is not the thing. It is a sign of the thing. It reveals the truth of what's behind that. The body of Christ, our relationship, our binding to each other, is actually invisible. There's, we can come up with metaphors for it, but we can't see it. We can only see when we're doing it in the, in the form of the Eucharist or our worship together. I think in a very real sense, uh, you, you know these words, whenever two or three are gathered together in his name, Jesus is in the midst of them. And our gathering here right now is the, is the real presence of Christ as much as communion is. It doesn't feel that way for us because we miss the sign and the symbol that we know bind us together. Bishop Doyle tells us that in this time of being apart from each other, rather than trying to fix this problem, we need instead to pay closer attention to that inward and spiritual grace, that invisible reality, and figure out how we're going to give it visible expression in our relationships. We do that collectively the way we're doing it right now. We do it, thank God for technology, with Zoom. Other people are doing it in different ways, but what they all have in common is how do we keep our relationship together in the absence of the ability to, to be in each other's physical presence. Others have asked, isn't a meal that we share at home 
with each other, with our families, in our house, with bread, with wine, with water. Isn't that a holy meal? Absolutely. Of course it is. Of course Jesus is present with us in those times. It's not the fullest expression of the meal because it's insular. It's limited to those who can be in the room. And you could argue that the same could be said of Holy Communion. It's the best that we can do as, at trying to cast an image of a reality that is so hard to see with spiritual eyes if we can't see it with our physical eyes. I believe that in this gospel, what Jesus is telling us is that, yes, the burdens are many of, of what is actually expected of the creatures of God, but that Jesus also knows our limitations and loves us. I said a couple of weeks ago that in, uh, in Jesus' relationship to us, he looks at us and values us. There's a major difference between tolerating people and the calls for tolerance may be better than, than the intolerance that abounds in the world right now. But tolerating each other is not what's called for. Our relationships call for us to value each other as Jesus values us, to see the intrinsic worth of another human being and make that person a, real, a lived reality in our own presence. That's the real work of Christians. And as Bishop Doyle says, this time that we're apart from each other is a time that we make the loss of our physical presence together. But I do want to offer that prayer today. I want to share it with you. It's, um, it's a, a book that comes uh, from Enriching Our Worship, actually, and it's a, a prayer that's intended for use in hospitals. It presupposes that uh, a priest or a Eucharistic minister has brought communion to a person in a hospital who is physically unable to receive it. So the context is a little bit different, but you get the idea. And let me share that with you now. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though we cannot consume these gifts of bread and wine together now, we thank you that we have received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we embody your desire to be renewed for your service through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. O God, who hast taught us to keep all thy commandments by loving thee and our neighbor, Grant us the grace of thy Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to thee with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you made us in your image and redeemed us through, your, through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you gather the lambs in your arms and carry them in your bosom. We commend to your loving care all those who suffer from any illness or disease. Relieve their pain, guard them from all danger, and restore to them your gifts of gladness and strength, and raise them up to a life of service to you. Hear us, we pray for your dear name's sake. Amen. O God, who hast made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and didst send thy blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near, grant that people everywhere may seek after thee and find thee, Bring the nations into thy fold, pour out thy spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of thy kingdom through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now this is uh, our, our chance to, uh, as, as the body of Christ, as the church, to intercede for each other and for others and so I encourage you to unmute yourself and then offer a prayer for the good of, of our community in this world. And finally, 
after we've all had a chance to express our own thoughts and prayers and intercessions, then Lee will read any of the prayers that have been posted on our chat. I'd like this, Charles, I'd like to uh, once again, you know, pray not only for an absence of violence, but the presence of justice and for a cure for the coronaviruses of all those who have died from it and all those who are sick from it. And I want also express thanksgiving for friends and family and I also want to express once again thanksgiving for all the beautiful things in nature, it's like the trees and the flowers and all the lizards and all and flowers, all that kind of stuff. Amen. For all the healthcare workers, for all of the people working in hospitals and other roles, to keep them safe and to help them in their tedious work. Amen. I pray that God, I, I'm not sure if I'm unmuted or not. Yeah. No? You are. I am? We can hear you. Okay. My, I'm not, I don't have the yellow circle around me. So anyway, I pray that God will give our daughter-in-law, Stephanie, wisdom and discernment as she searches desperately for a job. Amen. I would like to uh, simply say thanks be to God for the health that my family and my daughter's family enjoy. And pray that the others who are not so fortunate find relief. I want to give thanks to three spectacular fireworks, 945 last night, about two lots over this, that's an empty lot. And the family next to it apparently bought some pretty pricey fire, fireworks. I mean, it was sort of, I would say, the normal city fireworks, uh, 10%. It didn't go near as high. But the same kind of, you know, booming, festooning things. And that just kind of, yeah, you know, smell the gunpowder without being shot, of course. Uh, <laughs> It was beautiful. Thank you. I want to offer a prayer for Trish Conrad as she has lost her husband and for Ann Vanderberg as she's lost her father and for all those who are enduring loss and, and pain in our congregation. We pray for Mark and his wife, Carrie, who are both in the hospital with COVID. We pray for Danielle, who is ill. We give thanks for negative COVID test results for Vivian. Okay. We pray for wisdom and grace for government officials at all levels. We pray for Samantha, Janie, Cece, Paul, James, and their families. We pray for Stephanie's upcoming surgery on Wednesday um, and her subsequent recovery. We pray for the Dow family. We pray for Pam, Rebecca, Ananias, and Judy. We pray for Brock, Gabriella, and their family. We give thanks for the life of Buckwood. We pray for Trish, Tracy, and Matt, and all their family. We pray for Dick, Carla, Steve, Ann, Pam, and Danny. We pray for Tonya, Marianne, Annette, and Chris and their families. We pray for Don and Margaret. We pray for Fleur's neighbor, David. We give thanks for successful recovery of Peter, Nina, and Hillary from COVID. We pray for Barb and for Helen. We give thanks for the life of Ann Vanderberg's father and pray for her family. 
We pray for Josh, who is looking for a job, and all those who are seeking employment. We give thanks for Lisa Diane for her director skills and wish her and Joey blessings on their anniversary. We pray for Tanya and Trisha who have experienced loss. We give thanks for the entire production team that makes the service work so beautifully each Sunday. And I'll add to that a major thanks to all those that helped me find all the prayers in the chat after the computer kicked me out a little while ago. <laughs> we offer prayers for Richard, Jill, Shannon, and Lou. We pray for Barbara's brother, Mark. We pray, pray for Bo and his grandparents and mother. We pray for Zach, who's struggling with mental illness. Dear Lord, here are these prayers, these thanksgivings. Um, we offer them to you that you would take each desire or thought of our heart and Take it and bless it and break it and then give it back according to your purposes. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all the days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. And now, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you so much, Steve. And before we uh, begin our, our uh Closing him, I just want to point out a pet peeve of uh, a member of my previous congregation about this hymn who always reminded it, reminded us his purple mountain majesty, just one mountain. So here we go.
Well, uh, yes, indeed. Uh, happy 4th of July, everybody. And now it's, it's our time for announcements, uh, and then we'll celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. So are there any announcements, first of all, uh, or, or just if, if you have, if, if you know someone celebrating a birthday or anniversary or have an announcement, let's just do it all now. Why don't we do, why don't we do birthdays and anniversaries first? Sure. Do announcements. Sounds good. Um, <laughs> whose birthdays? I'm celebrating 60. <laughs> Charlotte. Hey. Today, okay. 60. Well done. Okay. Steve. Tom. Tom. Yeah, Tom. Tom. Right. right. Uh, 81 to, on Tuesday. Oh, Tom. Well done. Who else? Looks like you have one from David Schmersel that his wife, Kaylee, and he are celebrating their first anniversary tomorrow. Going to have many more to go. Right. Steve, there's a couple more in the chat. Fleur's son, Chris, has a birthday tomorrow. And Anna is celebrating um, her 16th anniversary. Great. Okay, let's uh, let's all gather together and and uh, pray together. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> okay, Lane, you have some announcements? Um, I have a couple of things um, that were in an email I sent yesterday, but I just want to make sure people are aware of them. Um, we're going to do another, I say we, the DOK was gracious enough to, uh, to take a leadership role on this. They're going to do another parish-wide phone tree, so uh, hopefully you'll be getting a call soon from them. But I made clear to them that I didn't want to saddle them with responsible for responsibility for placing every call. Some of them will be making calls. Um, they will if they want to, and they won't if they don't want to. So I want to put in a, a, a plug for the idea of becoming a caller. Um, if you are willing to place calls to members of the congregation to maintain the body of Christ in this way, um, please contact the Daughters of the King. The contact info is in the email that I sent. Um, also want to say, uh, put in a plug for Saints on Call. That's Saints on Call at allsaints.org. That's for people who have a need, like the, a need to get groceries or medications or something like that, or need technical help uh, or errands run. Um, and then people who have some help to give, a um, uh, great way to, uh, to be sisters and brothers in Christ to each other. Um, reiterating that uh, Trish Conrad's husband, Buck, um, died a couple of mornings ago. Um, very sad about that. And in fact, I, I took a chance and texted her late at night last night because I had just noticed that there was a lunar eclipse last night um, at about 1130. I didn't text her that late, but, um, uh, but the uh, astronomers call it a buck moon. I'm not sure entirely why, but it was a buck moon, and I thought she would appreciate knowing that, and she did. Also, Aunt Chancellor uh, Ann Vanderberg's father, Bob Ingalls, um, died a couple of days ago in Oklahoma. Um, Ann has been with her family taking care of them, and uh, um, it's a pleasure to, to know that she's with him, but it's a sad day at their home, of course, and please keep her in prayer. Um, you probably will recall that our bookkeeper, Anita, um, was scheduled to uh, leave her position around April 15th, but then COVID came. And so our search for a new bookkeeper was delayed. We hired a new bookkeeper. We did a month of training and then she left. So we are searching for a new bookkeeper right now. Um, if you know someone who's an excellent bookkeeper, I wish you would pass that news on to uh, PGG because we're searching for an excellent bookkeeper right now. And in the meantime, Anita is back to uh, 
help us get through this second transition, but uh, we'll weather the storm on that. And the last thing that I put in that email was a, a further invitation. I really want to stay in touch with you. In addition to all the phone calls that the DOK will be coordinating, I would love to speak with you directly, but only ones who really would like to speak with me. You can do that. Um, there's, a, there's an app uh, that, again, it's in the email that I sent out, uh, and it allows you to pick a time on my calendar that if it shows as open, that means it really is open. It's not inconvenient. It's a great time for us to talk. Um, if you've already done it, let's do it again. I really want to stay in touch. So I'm going to hand back to Steve. Great. Any other announcements? Then I say, let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. One last, last thing. I want to say a shout out of, of thanks to Lisa Diane, who is normally directing. Um, I can do it. I was the first director um, when we first got going, so I know how to do it. Um, but boy, she's been doing it for a while and really knows what she's doing. So uh, I, don't, I don't have enough appreciation for what all she puts into it until I have to do the job myself. Thank you, Lisa Diane. Okay, let's... Uh grab our coffee cups and and circle up and let's have a let's have a time together just sharing and thinking and being together